Well, good morning. It's a great joy to share worship with you today, and, and uh, this is uh, wonderful to look out and see uh, uh, many faces here in the sanctuary, and a special greeting as well to all who are sharing worship with us online today. Um, this uh, is the first Sunday in Lent, uh, the season in the church year of lengthening our roots in God's love and the roots of God's love in us. Um, it's the time where we have a way being prepared in the wilderness for the Easter life of our Lord. Uh, since moving to one service on Sundays, uh, we said that the fifth Sundays of the month would be in the language of the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, we didn't do this on January 30th, which was a fifth Sunday, um, but we promised that instead uh, we would share the Book of Common Prayer uh, language uh, liturgy today, and that's what, so that's what we're doing. Uh, in addition to all this, this Sunday is the first Sunday after St. David's Day. Uh, a couple of folks in the parish here I will certainly not need reminding of that. Uh, and uh, at St. Paul's, uh, this always means that we uh, sing uh, Welsh hymns together uh, on that day. And uh, we are blessed to have our virtual choir lead us in three such hymns, and also to have our offertory instrumental played on uh, the organ from All Saints Church in Oystermouth, Swansea, Wales. And a quick word about uh, the cover and theme slide for today's service. Uh, for all our Sundays in Lent, we're going to show uh, the ongoing place in our hearts for the people of Ukraine by displaying images of Jesus made by Ukrainian artists. Uh, the image this week is by artist Oksana Semenchenko. Now, let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you together today. We pray for your hand of blessing upon each person. We pray that you would be glorified in our midst and your loving purposes accomplished in each person's life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And another thing that we uh, do on the first Sunday in Lent also, the first Sunday of Advent uh, is uh, we share the great litany, and the words are on our screens. I invite you to say the parts that are in the uh, yellow italics. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, Advocate and Guide, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons and one God, have mercy on us. Lord, remember not our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears. Spare us, good Lord, spare your people, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and mischief, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from your wrath, and from everlasting condemnation. Good Lord, deliver us from all spiritual blindness, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us from all deadly sin and from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. 
good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of your word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us from earthquake and tempest, from drought, fire, and flood, from civil strife and violence, from war and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, and by our proclamation of the kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and bitter grief, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, deliver us. In our times of trouble, in our times of prosperity, in the hour of death, and on the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. Receive now our prayers, Lord God. May it please you to rule and govern your holy church universal and lead it in your way. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, in true worship and holiness of life. Be her defender and keeper, that she may always seek your honor and glory, and endue the leaders of this nation with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protection, and shield them all in dangers and adversities. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdom and insight to those who govern us and to judges and magistrates the grace to execute justice with mercy. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of your word that in their preaching and living they may decide it clearly and show its truth. Hear us, good Lord. Bless all your servants preparing for ministry in your church. Pour your grace upon them that they may serve others as Christ himself has served us for the building up of his body in love. Hear us, good Lord. Encourage and prosper your servants who spread the gospel in all the world and send out laborers into the harvest. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep your people that all may find and follow their true vocation and ministry. Hear us, good Lord. Give us a heart to love and reverence you, that we may diligently live according to your commandments. Hear us, good Lord. To all your people give growth in grace to listen to your word, to receive it gladly, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand firm in the faith. Encourage the faint-hearted. Raise up those who fall. And finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. To all nations grant unity peace and concord, and to all people give dignity, food and shelter. Hear us, good Lord. Grant 
grant us abundant harvests, strength and skill to conserve the resources of the earth, and wisdom to use them well. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. Hear us, good Lord. Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water, and show your pity on all prisoners and captives. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen and preserve all women who are in childbirth and all young children, and comfort the aged and lonely. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned, the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Heal those who are sick in body or mind, and give skill and compassion to all who care for them. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us true repentance, forgive our sins, and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Hear us, good Lord, Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let's say together the collect for the day. Almighty God, whose Son fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are but did not sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to thy spirit, that as thou knowest our weakness, so we may know thy power to save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And uh, we remain standing to sing our opening hymn. If you want to check it out in the uh, blue book, it's 393, but it is on our screens. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. Please be seated. 
by a happy coincidence, our first and second readings today are being given by Welsh expats Doreen and Kerry. I'll read it in English so you understand. <laughs> First reading is from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and, it, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time, and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation mighty and, pop and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonder. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. And you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 91. We will say the psalm responsively, breaking at the asterisk. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, abides in the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your habitation, there shall be no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your body. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. Under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. He shall call upon him, and I will answer him. With long life will I satisfy him. Let us pray. Gracious God, in times of anxiety and stress, teach us to wait in quietness for your protection and defense, made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
for one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. I invite all who are able to stand as we sing our gradual hymn, number 403 in our common praise, that all things now living. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during these days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give the world. And the devil And the devil said to him, I'm sorry. And the devil said to him, To you I will give you their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to... Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple saying to him if you are the son of God throw yourself down from here for it is written he will command his angels concerning you to protect you and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone Jesus answered him it is said do not put the Lord your God to the test When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I speak to you in the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Every year on the first Sunday of Lent, we hear the story of how Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by the devil. I think that many of us are alarmed by the fact of temptation, by the fact that when we pause and look into our hearts, we notice that there are within the, that we, we notice that there within them are desires that we know are wrong, wants that we know if indulged will lead to evil. We are alarmed because we basically think of ourselves as good people, honest, hardworking, upright folk, yet there lurking inside some of us is anger, jealousy, envy, or bitterness. In still others of us, there are cravings of every sort, from the desire to own ever more material things than we now own, to the desire to possess other people, to control other people, to be able to use their bodies for our own pleasure, their time to meet our needs, their talent to earn praise and profit for ourselves. The fact of temptation, the fact of evil desire, insofar as it exists in us and as it exists in me, is distressing. For some people, the more vivid the sense of temptation, the more disturbed they become. They begin to question their spirituality, their faithfulness, their ability to do good. They begin to feel weak, inferior, uncertain, and insecure. I think that at the heart of this uneasiness, at the heart of this distress, lies the thought that if we were really doing what we should be doing, then we would not experience such temptations. That our impulses would all be for the good, that our habits would keep us from even considering doing something that we know we ought not to do. While to such feelings, today's gospel has a clear response. And the response, perhaps surprisingly, is no. That's not how it works. Temptation is part of the human condition. It's a part of our humanity. And it's been so from the beginning. In the second creation story in the book of Genesis, we find the man and the woman in the garden tempted. Tempted by the words of the snake. And by the way, the snake is just a snake in the story. Uh, the snake doesn't represent anything else. It's just a snake, a special snake, a talking snake, but just a snake. And the snake tempts. And the temptations are really quite reasonable. Wouldn't you like to be wise like God? Sure, I'd like to be wise like God. Look at this fruit. Isn't it appealing to the eye? To the sense of smell? Wouldn't it be satisfying to the taste? Certainly, absolutely. Oh God, God was just joshing with you when God said, well, if you eat of this fruit, you will die. No, God was just fooling around, right? All quite appealing temptations. And temptation is always like that. It always seems appealing within a particular situation or context. And it has its own logic. It makes sense, right? So as I say, temptation is a part of the human condition. 
Indeed, it often seems that when we are closest to God, most connected to God, that is the very time at which we are most tempted. Again, think of the garden. God was there in the garden with the man and the woman. God walked with them. God talked with them. They had a very intimate, up-close, personal relationship with God. You couldn't imagine a closer relationship. And God had provided the humans with all that they needed, all that they required. And of course, look at today's gospel. Look at Jesus for a minute. He is raised in the righteousness, he is raised in righteousness by Mary and Joseph. He studies, he works, he observes the status, he sits with the teachers of the law, and finally, when the time is right, he is baptized by John in the Jordan, and the voice of God approves him, and the Spirit of God settles upon him, and then wham, he is tempted in the wilderness. Not once, not twice, but three times. And we are told that when the devil finally leaves Jesus, he does so only to wait for another opportune moment at which he can tempt Jesus. The good news of today's gospel reading lies in the fact that Jesus himself was tempted. You are not spiritually or morally inferior because there lies within you desires that are unworthy. You are not less than faithful simply because you consider cutting a corner or two here and there. In fact, the opposite might well be the case. You might be experiencing temptation because you are worthy to be tempted. Certainly, Jesus was worthy to be tempted. We are not spiritually or morally inferior simply because we experience temptation, nor are we a sinner simply because we feel sinful desires. Sin only comes in when we succumb to temptation, when we indulge the impulses that we know we should not indulge. Now, temptation can be broken down into three categories, categories that roughly match the experience that Jesus went through while wandering in the wilderness in the days immediately after his baptism. First, there are physical temptations. The urges we have to satisfy our physical wants, regardless of how we go about it. Then there are emotional temptations. Temptations to indulge one's feelings, one's ego, to make oneself the center of all things to receive all glory and all praise and all power, all the attention you want that you believe that you should have. And then there are the spiritual temptations, the temptation to test God, to, te to dare God, to prove God's love, to manipulate God, to get God to use supernatural powers on your behalf that you may be able to impress others with them that you may show to others your favored status in the eyes of the Lord. And temptation, as we see in today's gospel, always comes to us shrouded in goodness, in plausibility, in attractiveness. It comes as an outgrowth of the circumstances that we are in, circumstances that have their own logic and their own appeal. And very often, the choice is not between something that is absolutely bad and something that is absolutely good. Very often the choice is between what is easy and what is hard. And the temptation is to take the easy path, the easy road. To be tempted is to accept what comes naturally food when hungry, water when thirsty, sex when lonely, power when in authority, condensation when working with inferiors, impatient when dealing with the slow, the old, or the feeble, rudeness when dealing with those who are paid to serve, intolerance 
when dealing with those who don't fish or cut bait, hatefulness when dealing with those who contradict you, smugness when considering one's own performance, pride when thinking of one's own humility, one's own generosity, one's own political astuteness, social grace, tolerance, or faithfulness. All these things are natural. All these things are easy. And as we all know, all these things are very common. They are the fruits of temptations that are hard to refuse. You're hungry, Jesus. If you're the Son of God, do what comes naturally to you. Turn these rocks into bread. Use your advantage to your advantage. It won't hurt anyone. You want to change the world, Jesus, to make a difference, to see justice done, to help the poor, to set your people free. Well, all you have to do is simply bow right down right now and worship me. Jesus, you know that God loves you. Your plan will, be a, will sell a lot easier if people see that you are special. So let God save you from certain disaster. Let his angels carry you up from the ground in the presence of the priests and teachers and everyone in Jerusalem. And then you won't have to go around from home to home preaching and healing people. You won't have to work to convince people to follow your way. They'll line up for miles and miles just for a chance to see you. Temptation is a natural thing. It appeals to our natural impulses. And temptation is always an easy thing. And that, ultimately, I'd suggest, is the major part of its attraction. And there's only one cure for it. And that cure is faith. Jesus showed us the way by rebuffing the things that tempted him with his faith, with his focus on what God revealed to Israel through Moses and the prophets. When tempted with the easy way, Jesus drew from his heart to his mind the word of God that he had been taught. One does not live by bread alone. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus resisted the easy way, the natural way, by recalling God's way and by speaking it out in the midst of his temptation. And so can we, and even more so. More so because Christ is in us. He who won the victory over the evil one, he who resisted successfully, dwells within each and every one of us. Jesus knows how hard it is to walk the walk and talk the talk. He knows how easy it is to close your eyes to the troubles around you, your ears to the cries of need and despair, and your hearts to the hearts of those who live with you or near to you. But Jesus did not take the easy road. He took the hard road. He walked the walk. He did not close his eyes to the troubles around him. He did not close his ears to the cries of need and despair. He did not close his heart. Jesus knows the attraction of the quick fix and the struggle to keep on the difficult road, and he stands ready to help when we call upon him as we travel our own difficult roads. When we try to touch the Christ who is in us, when we reach inside ourselves and ask of ourselves, what would Jesus do here and now? Then we are on the road we should be on, because Jesus never chose the easy path. Jesus never chose or fell into the trap of the temptation of doing what was natural. Rather, Jesus chose to walk down the hard road, the road 
that God had set before him, a road that led to a cross. At the end of our days, I believe God will not ask us if we did wrong in this life, nor will God ask us if we have been tempted. But God, I believe, will ask us if we have tried to walk the road that Christ was on and in the direction that Christ walked it. And if we have, if we have chosen the harder path, and if we happen to stumble and fall once in a while, I believe that God, through Christ, will be there to bandage our wounds and wipe the tears from our eyes and embrace us with those arms that were stretched out for us in love on the cross. For we will have done all that God in Christ expects of us. Yes, we are all tempted. And often it seems natural, logical, reasonable, even good. The wrong is not in being tempted. The wrong comes when we give in to what we think is natural when we readily choose the easy way rather than the hard way, when we forget to follow Jesus on his path towards the cross. Praise be to his holy name. Amen. season of Lent, uh, which of course began as baptismal preparation, uh, we are going to be saying together the uh, creed of our baptism as uh, we will be sharing the Apostles' Creed each Sunday. And so I invite us to, as we're able, to stand and let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite us to kneel or be seated as Betty leads us in prayer. A blessing for the Ukraine. Let us pray. God, the unthinkable has happened swiftly, relentlessly, by stealth and through open destruction. The peace and beauty of the ordinary has been shattered in a day. Of God, of justice and might, we shall be to come and bring this suffering to an end. Comfort these trembling hearts, shield the vulnerable, strengthen those with the resources and the resolve to correct what they love. In the face of such overwhelming force, grant wisdom to the nations of our world 
to our leaders and to us, to grasp the unclassable, to see evil in its true light and come against it fleshly. Dear Ukraine, through the center we watch what is happening. We will not look away. Amen. A prayer for the response to COVID-19. God of all, we cry out to you for help. In your mercy, hear our protect. Protect us, Lord, and be with us, especially those of us most vulnerable during this coronavirus crisis. Particularly the people of the Ukraine and all whose lives are threatened by war or other calamities. Move us to reach out in love to our our neighbors neighbors near and far, so that the humble may be exalted, the hungry filled with good things. Grant us the courage not to rush back to our old ways, but to rebuild our world together, creating foundations of justice with equality and peace for all. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labour and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God has spoken peace into our hearts, we have that gift of peace we can share with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And wherever we may be, let's greet one another with the peace of Christ. At this time, we're pausing for a moment to remember our call to offer to God our time, talents, and treasure, sharing the gifts God has shared with us. Uh, One way that we share our treasure is through the offerings that we give to St. Paul's. I'd like to thank everybody for continuing to give financially to St. Paul's to help us carry out the mission of being channels of our God's peace, helping heal the brokenness of our global family through our words and our deeds. Uh, Some of you who are sharing today's service in person uh, may be uh, brought offerings for the offering plate, uh, and that is on the credenza, and we're still not uh, going to uh, circulate that offering plate right now, Um, but uh, you can place that on a credenza. If you forgot to do that, uh, I invite you to place your offering there uh, as you leave the sanctuary at the end of the service. Uh, But there are many other ways to give financially to St. Paul's. And uh, now we're going to listen to the traditional hymn for the beginning of Lent, 40 Days and 40 Nights, as an instrumental played on the magnificent organ that I mentioned earlier at All Saints Church in Oystermouth, Swansea, Wales, while our screens show a slide that mentions the ways that we can share our support and so participate in the mission God has given us.
stand, please, as we're able. And we'll say together the prayer over the gifts. God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer unto thee this day, and through the death and resurrection of thy Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. We're using Eucharistic Prayer A from the Book of Alternative Services. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It, it is, is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, who hast bidden us, thy faithful people, to cleanse our hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that reborn through the waters of baptism and renewed in the Eucharistic mystery, we may be more fervent in prayer and more generous in works of love. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite us to kneel or be seated. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, According to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins 
and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. We say together the Agnes Day. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. We now have the awesome privilege of sharing communion, physically for some of us and spiritually for all of us. To receive communion physically, we're going to have you uh, come up when it's your row's turn, and the side people will let you know that. And uh, please do maintain physical distancing. There are stickers on the floor that will help you do that. Uh, and you can sanitize your hands. And then uh, please have your hands in front of you in the shape of a cross, palms up. And uh, then uh, Norman will uh, place in your hand a wafer, which has uh, three drops of wine on it. And uh, then I invite you to move to the right or the left, depending on which side you're sitting. Um, and then you can uh, partake um, and um, then just head round back and come up and be seated again. Um, if you uh, don't wish to receive communion but would like to receive a blessing, uh, please do come to the front. And when you're in front of Norman, uh, place your arms in the shape of a cross over your chest, kind of like you're giving yourself a hug, and then he'll know that that is your desire. And so now I invite us all to share these gifts of God for the people of God. Yes. Thanks be to God.
Once again, I invite all who are able to please stand. Our prayer after communion is on our screens. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily <coughs> thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing of uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to 
look at some announcements together. And the first announcement is actually one that uh, isn't on our screens because I just found out about it. Uh, we have somebody who's got an 80th birthday. I don't know who that might be. <clears throat> might be over this direction. So, uh, yes. Uh, so, so congratulations, Richard. It's possible. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's uh, sing happy birthday to Bob and uh, many uh, uh, happy returns. <laughs> so let's, let's say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bob. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> well, you can wish uh, Bob a happy birthday over coffee today. Uh, we have uh, coffee time again after the service um, in person. And um, so that'll be in the hall, um, and it'll be towards the uh, back um, uh, door there, uh, where it goes into the backyard. And uh, so uh, everybody's invited to that. Um, also, uh, we will continue our virtual coffee time, uh, but we're going to move it back 15 minutes. So it'll be 11.45, so those uh, who would like to join us uh, for online, uh, you can do that. And actually, of course, uh, you could even do both. Uh, so. Uh, that would be a great way to spend uh, time connecting with one another. I'd like to thank uh, all who participated in our Zoom uh, Shrove Tuesday uh, pancake supper. And uh, the, uh, our participants are pictured on the screen uh, uh, in our, our action shot of eating. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it was a fun time together and we, we enjoyed that time of fellowship. Now, um, speaking of times together, our uh, Ash Wednesday evening service was live streamed, and uh, you can share it by going to the sermon section of our website. And there are actually baggies of ashes uh, and uh, reserved sacrament hosts that are just inside the main entrance, and uh, you could uh, take those uh, if you wished, and then when you get to that part of the service, you can make this, the sign of the cross uh, with the ashes and uh, partake of communion uh, later in the service. Also, just inside the main entrance, uh, there are Drawn to the Cross daily devotion, uh, Lenten devotional booklets inspired by the writings of Henry Nouwen, and uh, other Lenten material is there too. Uh, you may also find something edifying for your Lenten journey in the book nook, just uh, a lending library just outside my office. Uh, that has some Lenten material there. Um, also, uh, our main library by the South Doors. Uh, uh, and uh, there are also excellent resources online. Uh, this month's issue of Living Waters mentions uh, two of those on page 13. And uh, one of those is actually put together by the Canadian Church this year for Lent. And has two, fo two folks from the Diocese of Calgary in it that I counted so far anyway. Speaking of uh, this month's issue of Living Waters, it's being posted, uh, uh, is posted in the uh, news section of our website. So I invite you to, to go there for that. Uh, Primates World Relief and Development Fund is supporting uh, those enduring uh, the violence in Ukraine. And uh, checks can be made out directly to PWRDF or to St. Paul's with PWRDF in the memo. Um, and uh, this week's news bulletin and also this month's Living Waters issue uh, give more information, uh, including other ways to donate. Uh, and I do encourage us to donate to, to this uh, way of providing relief for the people of Ukraine. And of course, we continue to keep all of those in Ukraine and all of those who have uh, relatives or friends there uh, in our prayers. We are now into Lent, of course, and that means that our Lenten study should be uh, getting underway. And sure enough, this Wednesday we'll begin. 
And uh, it's uh, uh, Wednesday morning at 10.30 and evening at 7.30. Uh, the one in the morning is in person, the one in the evening is via, via Zoom. We'll be continuing to meet until April 6th, up to that date and including it. Um, this year, the study is called Growing Good, Living Hope, with a slash there, Growing Good slash Living Hope. Uh, and as that name suggests, uh, it has two components. Uh, Growing Good is from the Church of England, uh, their Lenten study this year that they've been promoting. And uh, Living Stones, Living Hope, uh, is um, the second component, and that's from the Worldwide Anglican Communion. And what we're doing is looking at First Peter, which will be the same book that it will be looked at in Lambeth uh, Conference this year. And uh, we, it has different folks from throughout the Anglican Communion uh, sharing their experiences in that. And both of these studies are really designed to help us uh, think of how we can live out our faith in the world and make a difference uh, in sharing the love of the Lord. And there is a two-page spread about this uh, study in Living Waters, uh, if you'd like more information. And if you'd like to participate, please do let me know, um, especially, uh, of course, if you want to be in the Zoom study, because you'll need the Zoom link. Uh, February 24th, uh, we had a service with our brothers and sisters from Ukraine in our hearts and minds. Uh, we posted uh, that service on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Uh, it included prayers uh, for peace and protection for Ukraine and an akathist uh, in praise of God's creation, uh, showing the beauty of the Ukrainian Christian tradition. Uh, this one came from St. Athanasius Ukrainian Catholic Church in Regina, which uh, is pictured there in the screen. Uh, you can watch that uh, service on our YouTube channel. Uh, and the next uh, service uh, uh, is actually planned for this Thursday. And the easiest way to view uh, all of these services uh, uh, is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And the link to do that is in our weekly news bulletin. And we have uh, something very exciting happening this Lent. Uh, at 8.30 uh, on March 19th, I think for the second time since 2020, and certainly the first uh, since uh, last summer, uh, our men and the men of St. Peter's are gathering together for our men's breakfast. And um, our ladies will be gathering together <coughs> for the first time uh, since last year at 11.30. All men and women aged 13 and up are invited, and please do bring your friends. And uh, the men's breakfast will be Lens Day. Uh, once a year at men's breakfast, we honor our former member, Len Mountford, who passed away in 2011. And uh, we're doing this at uh, the March 19th breakfast this year. Uh, in honor of Len, uh, an avid soccer fan, uh, we're wearing shorts and our favorite sports jersey. And uh, proceeds from the breakfast will be donated to a charity and Kerry will uh, let us know which one on March 19th. There was a four question survey regarding Sunday school uh, sent out to households with children of Sunday school age. Uh, if you received this survey, please do uh, fill it out uh, and uh, return it. Uh, it's just an email, so you just uh, fill it out, write it on that email and, and reply. Uh, reply. Um, if you could do that as soon as possible. Um, if you have children or grandchildren who may come to Sunday school but you haven't received a survey, please do let me know or, or contact the office and we'll be sure to get, get a survey to you. And this is to help us as we plan moving ahead uh, in the next number of months. Well, to read about all that's happening, please do check out our weekly news bulletin and our monthly issue of Living Waters, and those are in the news section of our website. There's also a newsletter emailed out once a week, just a, uh, at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and uh, also I send out uh, once a week uh, an email as well. So there are many ways to stay in contact and to know what's happening, and hopefully to be as involved as we can. Well, let's have... One last Welsh hymn, and you couldn't have a, 
uh, a collection of Welsh hymns without singing this one, uh, number 565, and our common praise as we go forth uh, together, we sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Christ.